Can classical music be weird? I mean, truly and gloriously strange? Classical music? Absolutely. The composer Eric Satie was perhaps the oddest figure in the history of classical music. His influence would go on to uh, influence future eccentrics like Frank Zappa or Salvador Dali. John Cage called him his personally favorite composer of all time. Satie was born in 1866 and he studied at the Paris Conservatory, which he called the local penitentiary. Satie quietly rebelled against all the predominant trends of music of his time. For one thing, he hated music from Germany. This was the cultural powerhouse that had produced the likes of Bach, Beethoven, and Brahms. In Beethoven, he hated the endless finales, which he thought were just all too calculated to make an audience swoon in cheap rapture. He renounced romanticism and instead he cultivated an entirely radical new aesthetic. It was music without profundity, music without passion. It basked in childlike simplicity, and at times it was hilariously weird. Satie adored the absurd, and he wasn't alone in this. One of his friends in Paris had a pet lobster whom he would walk down the streets on a leash. Another friend infamously mounted a urinal on the wall of a famed Parisian art exhibit which created endless scandal and instant debate. <laughs> Satie lived in monk-like uh, poverty and it was discovered after he died because no one had actually ever gone to his apartment that he had two grand pianos, one stacked on top of the other. In fact, the last words he spoke before dying at the age of 59 were, ah, the cows. <laughs> Say what you will, he was consistent until the end. In fact, he wrote one piece uh, called Vexations. It's a short and very unappetizing chorale for the piano, and it has instructions to repeat it 840 times in a row. This will take you about 18 hours. Um, another piece, much shorter, is simply called True flabby preludes for a dog. <laughs> Satie hated a kind of music called program music. This was a very popular genre of its day. And in program music, the music depicts a literal story that the composer is trying to express through the various sounds and emotions of a big orchestra. And in program music, it's always dramatic. So how did Satie rebel against this trend? Well, he wrote program music. However, he wrote the most mundane program music ever composed. It's the epitome of, of the banal. It has all the passion and profundity of the wait line at the DMV. <laughs> now, when Satie wrote his program music, he actually included exact story words in almost every line of the musical score so his intentions would be clear about what he was depicting. However, he warned, and this is a quote, I forbid anybody to read the text aloud during the musical performance. Ignorance of my instructions will result in my righteous indignation. No exceptions will be allowed. Now, in tonight's performance, I'm going to play one of these program pieces, and I will not read the text aloud. However, I will have, uh, you will have the ability to read along silently while I perform. So the piece I'm going to play is called Dried Embryos. And it was written in 1913. It's in three short movements, each movement depicting a specific sea animal. Each movement has a nearly unpronounceable Latin title, which is actually the, the Latin name for that particular animal. The first piece, is the first movement, is called holothuri. A holothuri is a sea cucumber, which is actually an animal without eyes. And it depicts this uh, sea cucumber as it goes out for a walk. The second movement is called edriopthalma. And uh, this depicts a very sad and woeful shrimp who spends his days hiding behind rocks. You might notice the inclusion of a famous melody in this particular movement by Frédéric Chopin. 
And in the music, it actually says, quotation of the famed mazurka by Franz Schubert. Now, don't be confused. Schubert never wrote a mazurka in his life. It'd be a little bit like saying, this is a quotation of the famed Viennese waltz by Led Zeppelin. <laughs> the third movement, called Podopfalma, represents a crab that's gone hunting. And you're going to want to put your uh, seatbelt on for the finale. So, Eric Satie, visionary genius, madman, charlatan, you can decide. But consider this. A great composer is a cultural barometer of their time. 1913 was a truly terrifying time to live. The world was on the brink of a catastrophic world war. Whole empires were in decay. If logical thinking had brought about this nightmarish and inevitable reality, then perhaps Satie's escape into the absurd was and is a better place to hide. So dried embryos, and it will be accompanied by my assistant, uh, Nathan, Nathan Smith. <laughs> 